The speed is where many people have misconceptions about this board. When X-Way revealed that they were releasing a new board, I think most people familiar with X-Way expected it to keep all the best things about the X1 Pro, but have a flexi deck and more range. In most people's minds, that would essentially be an upgraded X1 Pro, but that's not what X-Way had in mind. In the CEO's own words, the X1 Pro is X-Way's high-end board, and the Flex, believe it or not, is their budget board. Basically, all these competing brands are making boards that are, in Vic's opinion, very easy to make. And people are buying them. So x was like, since this type of board is so easy to make, we'll make one also and we'll do it better than everyone else. So here is their budget board. And because this is their budget board, the performance and speed is not quite like the X1 Pro, which, if you don't know, is one of the quickest boards that you can buy. Unlike the X1 Pro, Turbo increases only the acceleration and not the top speed. The acceleration is noticeably lower than the X1 Pro, but I think it's similar to its direct competitors. It's hard to tell for sure without comparing different boards side by side. I asked Vic if the reduced performance is due to hardware limitations, and he said it's not. They purposely limited the performance in software. He gave two reasons. One, for safety, because this board uses a flexi deck. And two, because each of X-Way's boards has their own specialties. The X1 Pro is their high performance board, while the Flex is more for casual use. I'm gonna take a wild guess and predict that when they sell out of X1 Pros, they'll release a firmware update that allows the Flex to go faster and accelerate harder. Just a wild guess. Some people are heavy and some people live in places that have hills. More torque is always better. It's not like the board doesn't have multiple speed modes in an app to limit each mode's performance. About that top speed of 38 kilometers per hour, I actually hit 41 kilometers per hour. There was probably a slight downhill slope. I mentioned this because if you see my other videos, you know that I normally don't ride that fast, but I just felt really confident on this board. I think the trucks have a lot to do with it. The brakes are really good, at least until the board is low on power. For some reason, when the power is low, the brakes become really weak. The X1 and X1 Pro are not like this, so I'm pretty sure that this is something that they'll fix in a firmware update, before the board is for sale. By the time you're watching this video, they've probably fixed it already. Good braking behavior is really important to me, and it's why I feel only lukewarm about so many other boards. I don't care about top speed and acceleration nearly as much as how the brakes feel. Aside from the weak brakes, which I'm sure they'll fix, the braking performance on this board is great, just like on the X1 and X1 Pro. According to my scale, this board is- By the way, check out defective.com. It's spelled D-F-F-E-C-T-I-V-E.com. Not defective, defective, okay? Defective, not defective, all right? Not defective, defective. Defective.com.